Today, we are going to look at a body viz brain builder about long bones. But first, let's make sure we have an understanding of the four categories of types of bones there are. Bones can be categorized as flat, long, short, and irregular. Flat bones are flattened and broad in surface. Examples include ribs, shoulder blades, and the bones of the skull. Short bones are cube-like in shape, and they can be found in your wrist and ankles. Long bones are longer in length than they are wide, and often act as levers to support muscle movements, and can be found in your legs and arms. Irregular bones are any bones that do not fit into any of these other categories. An example of this would be the vertebrae in your spine. Now that we are familiar with these four categories, let's take a deeper dive into understanding long bones. Bone is highly vascularized, which means it contains many blood vessels and is a mineralized form of connective tissue containing organic and inorganic components. This allows bone to undergo a process called ossification, which is the natural hardening that takes place in bone formation. Ossification can occur when there are fibroblasts, an excess of calcium, and an adequate blood supply. Any tissue in the body can calcify, but only bone can ossify. Long bones are longer than they are wide, have articulating ends, and contain a hollow central medullary cavity. The shaft of the bone is surrounded by two layers of connective tissue that are together called the periosteum. An important thing to remember is that the periosteum only covers the shaft of the bone. The articulating ends are covered with an articular cartilage, which is composed of hyaline cartilage. The medullary cavity runs through the shaft of the bone and is where the marrow is housed. How I like to think about this is similar to a Twizzler candy. The outer red part of the Twizzler is similar to the periosteum in that it covers the shaft of the bone with an inner hollow tube, which is kind of like the medullary cavity where the marrow is housed. Yellow marrow, which is mostly fat cells, is in the shaft of the bone and is used as an energy reserve. Red marrow contains stem cells, which differentiate into red and white blood cells, as well as platelets. Red marrow can be found within the trabecular bone, aka closer to the articulating ends. Red marrow is important in blood cell formation. If a frontal section is made of a long bone, we can see the compact or cortical bone and trabecular bone, also known as cantalus or spongy bone. The compact bone forms a thick wall of the shaft and a thin wall of the metaphyseal and epiphyseal segments of bone. Compact bone is located where the stress comes from only one or very few directions, like in the shaft. The trabecular bone is typically found within the metaphyseal and epiphyseal segments of the bone. Trabecular bone is found where the stress comes from multiple directions simultaneously, which is the ends of the bone. Even though bones ossify, they still can break. There are four main types of fractures that you should know. An open fracture is when a bone breaks through the skin and can be seen outside the leg. A closed fracture, which does not break through the skin. A partial fracture, which is an incomplete break of the bone. And finally, a complete fracture, which is a complete break of the bone, causing it to be separated into two or more pieces. In this BVF, you can see a complete closed fracture example. Typically, breaks occur in the shaft of a long bone because there is not as much trabecular or spongy bone to handle stress. Next, we will look at symptoms, causes, and treatments of a broken leg. And finally, give a patient example. Symptoms of a broken leg include severe pain, which is worse with movement, swelling, tenderness, bruising, shortening of the leg or visible deformity, an inability to walk or put weight on the leg. Some causes of a broken leg include falls, motor vehicle accidents, sports injuries, abuse, or overuse. Treatments for leg fractures depend on the type of fracture. Setting the leg is necessary if the fracture is displaced. A doctor may need to manipulate the pieces back into place and then apply a splint. Immobilization is important in healing and usually requires keeping weight off the broken leg for six to eight weeks. Medications can be used to reduce inflammation and pain. Therapy after the cast or splint is removed to rebuild muscle mobility. And surgery if there are multiple fractures, damage to ligaments or joints, or if the fracture is in a specific area. Finally, let's take a look at a patient example. You are working in the emergency room when a patient from a car accident arrives. 
You receive your patient's file from the ambulance and take a look. Age, 27. Gender, male. Chief complaints, severe pain in the leg with an inability to walk. You enter the patient's room and see severe discoloration of the left leg, and the patient is in visible pain. After making sure the patient has stable vitals, you order an x-ray which confirms a broken tibia and fibula. You reset the bone and cast for the fracture. The patient is to wear a cast for eight weeks and then begin physical therapy. This is a classic example of a broken long bone. For more 3D anatomy videos, like this video and use the links on your screen to subscribe to our channel.